Hello. In this video, we're going to show you how to properly fill out the rent roll spreadsheet for the Landlord Compensation Fund application process. We'll go over the steps to fill it out properly and how to avoid some pitfalls so that your application process goes much smoother. Step one of the process is to open your web browser to download the file. You can get this file from the Oregon Housing and Community Services website. We've copied and pasted the address in the bar here. Scroll down and you see Application Portal and Required Forms. And in there is the Rent Roll template. Download this to a location on your computer and save the file. Once you see that the file is saved, you may close your web browser. Find the location where you downloaded the file, and double click it to open it in Microsoft Excel. Your first step will be to enable the file for editing since it was just downloaded. On the Instruction tab, you will see there are three sections. The gray box at the top gives an overview of the Rent Roll Spreadsheet. The second section gives a step-by-step -step guidance on how to fill out each column. And below that is an example that you can follow. When you click on the Rent Roll Data tab, you will be brought to the data entry area of the Rent Roll Spreadsheet. Across the top, you will see a row of headers. A few important things to note about these headers. They must remain as they are on the spreadsheet in order for your data to import properly. Please do not edit them, rearrange them, or move them as that will cause the data that you upload to fail in your application. Now we can begin entering data in the Rent Roll Spreadsheet. We'll start with the rent due date first. This is the date that the rent is due according to the terms of the rental agreement. And it should be entered in the form of month, day, and then year. It is important that the dates be entered in this format so that they are represented correctly in the system so that your application will be processed correctly and as swiftly as possible. For this portion of our example, we will be entering tenant data from April 2020 through February 2021. So we will add each due date to one cell in the first column. Next, in column B, we will add the rent due amount. If the rent is the same for each month during the period, we can use the copy and paste feature to speed up entry. Excel is a powerful program with many ways to copy and paste data. We suggest you use the method shown here to avoid issues, as you will see later on. Following a similar process, we will enter the amount paid each month by the tenant in each month's row under column C. Again, if the amounts are the same, we can use the same copy and paste method that we used in column B. Following the same principle, we will enter the balance of unpaid rent or the total rent unpaid in column D for each month represented in the row. If you are familiar with Excel already, you may enter a formula to calculate the difference between the rent due and the amount paid and input it in column D for you. 
However, OHCS cannot support or help troubleshoot problems that may arise from using formulas in your spreadsheet. Next, we will add the building address in column E of the spreadsheet. This will be the street address of the building for which we are inputting tenant data. Please note, this is the street address only. City, state, and zip will be added in other columns. We can use the same copy and paste method that we used in previous columns to populate multiple cells. If you use Excel's drag to copy function, it will cause your street addresses to input improperly in the spreadsheet. This could cause significant delays in processing your application or even rejection of the application altogether. Next, we will enter the building unit number or letter, if applicable, the building city, the building state, and the zip code in which it is located. The process is the same for each column and similar to what we have done previously. Because there are no numbers in the building city and building state column, we can use Excel's click to drag function without concern that the application may be improperly formatted. However, in the zip code and current tenant move in date columns, we will want to use the copy and paste function as described earlier in order to avoid errors. It is important to note that tenant move in dates must be formatted the same as other dates in the spreadsheet, that is, in the format of month, day, and year. We can now move on to adding head of household first name, head of household last name, head of household email, and head of household phone information in the appropriate columns. Note that in this instance, the head of household email overflows the cell provided. In this case, you may widen the cell margins so that the data fits. This also applies to other columns such as building address. However, again, the cells may not be rearranged or reformatted or your data will not import properly into the portal. If you do not know head of household email or phone number or are not sure that the information you have on hand is valid, leave these cells blank. Tenant information may be copied from the first row to subsequent rows in the manners described earlier. Please check as you move through the process to ensure that your data is inputting correctly and does not cause issues later on in the process. Again, notice that in cells with numeric data or digits, we are using the copy and paste method rather than the click and drag method to populate cells. Finally, enter the head of household's primary or preferred language if known. If this information is not known, please simply leave the cells blank. For the second tenant in our example apartment complex, we can copy and paste and reuse some of the data we have entered previously so long as it matches correctly to each tenant's situation. In this case, we will use the same range of dates. We can also copy rent due, rent paid, and total rent unpaid amount from previous entries to new entries to speed the process. We can then go back and edit as necessary. 
please be sure to double check and make sure that the data is correct before you submit your rent roll if you choose to use this method. At this point, the process is the same for the second tenant as it was for the first tenant. Please ensure that all information is correct for each tenant and no information is overlapped. Again, if you are unsure of contact or language preference information, simply leave those fields blank. Here we can see the completed section for our second tenant. Since their email address was unknown, those spaces were left blank, and rent paid and rent unpaid amounts were updated to reflect each specific tenant's situation. Here we see our completed rent roll spreadsheet for our sample apartment complex. We saw tenants one and two previously. Note that tenant number three is no longer occupying their unit on the premises and has left with a balance owing. Tenant number four has no arrearages for the term covered by the LCF. Both tenants payment and balance information must be shown on the rent roll spreadsheet, however, in order to correctly calculate your score for funding evaluation. However, no personal information for tenant 3 or 4 should be included on the spreadsheet. The first and last name columns, as well as the email, phone number, and language columns for tenants 3 and 4 should all remain blank. Please note also, you should only include one property per spreadsheet. Each property must have its own rent roll spreadsheet filled out and uploaded through the LCF portal. Combining properties on a rent roll will cause significant delays in the application process and may cause your application to be rejected. This covers how to properly fill out your rent roll spreadsheet. If your property is somewhat different, the principles explained here should still help you be able to fill out your rent roll spreadsheet efficiently and properly. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to the Landlord Compensation Fund staff at hcs.lcf at oregon.gov.